Hey guys, how you doing today? It's me, Kelly. Hope you guys are having a great start to the weekend. Um, so I got a few questions about starting a art journal page and an easy way to uh, get like pictures and, and that kind of thing to put in your art journal. And so I probably have shown this before, but I'm going to show this um, and maybe this will help spark some creativity. Uh, in you or make you think about things that you have around the house that maybe you can recycle. I'm all into recycling and upcycling and all that kind of thing. So I thought this would be good. Now, this is a old um, 2016, I believe, magazine. It's just a Somerset studio. And I have millions of these. I love these. I buy these magazines. They're expensive and I hate to throw them away. Well, you know, you can only keep hold of how many, I mean, you know, you, you only have so much room. So, um, I thought, well, let's play in our art journal. I'm just going to use my, for now, because I have it sitting here, my, you know, art journal that I've been playing in. Oh, I'm going to turn my auto focus off though. Um, and that's what we'll do. But of course, if you've made your own journal, if you don't have a journal, maybe you only have printer paper or, uh, mixed media paper, watercolor paper, whatever you have, play on it. It doesn't matter. Fold it in half if you want, make it one big piece. It doesn't matter. So I'm not going to gesso because I'm going to be gluing. Now I'm going to be using my Mod Podge paper. Mod Podge came out with a um, paper Mod Podge, Avi, right? Um, because some people have complained that Mod Podge mat leaves their paper and their pages sticky after they use them. Um, sometimes that would happen to me. Other times it wouldn't. I think it might be the humidity and that kind of thing. I'm not sure. However, the Mod Podge paper I love. It is the same thing. It's matte. You can get it in gloss as well. And it is um, water-based sealer, glue, and finish. And I've went through, I can't even tell you how many of these. And if you've been with me for a while, y'all know, uh, that they come out with a fabric one as well, which I go through even more than I go through that. So that's what we're going to be using today. But of course, use your white school glue, your, um, you know, Elmer's washable school glue, if that's all you have. This, if you're interested, um, doing it in your art journal, I don't think matters as much. It doesn't matter to me if you're just starting out or you don't have the money to buy uh, supplies. Um, this is not... Uh, archival. Um, I've never had, I've been doing this for years and years and I've never had anything turn on me from using this. Um, this is what I started out with, but if you're concerned about that, make sure you, you know, use something that is archival like Mod Podge. Um, however, the, uh, glue sticks of, uh, Elmer's and this is, who is this? Avery, um, are acid free and photo safe. So you can use these if you're concerned. Blah. I have to say all that because some of you, uh, you know, are concerned and, and write me a lot about it or some of you yell at me about it. Um, so I just want to let you know, you know, it's all into what you dig. If you are worried about archival, then of course, use something that says it's archival. If not, and you're just playing like I am and you're not selling it or you're not, um, you know, whatever, then, you know, use what you got. Okay. Anyway. So we're going to go in here and one of the first things I do in my mixed media is I take uh, papers and they're usually scrapbook papers. Now these came in my magazine. Um, maybe I'll move back just a little bit more here. These came in the magazine um, and most of the time I think in the stamping and company one, they do the mixed media one. They give you some papers, some, you know, papers to sit and play with and whatever. So I ripped those out and I'm just going to go in and look. Obviously, this must have been a October Halloween one. Okay. It breaks my heart to have to rip these apart, but, oh, I rhymed. Um, but, you know, what, what's the point? They're just sitting here. Now, I saw this page, and I thought, let me move my light a little bit, and I thought, oh, that would be great with all the colors. So I'm going to rip this page out. And I'm not worrying how much I'm ripping or not. But listen, if you don't have art magazines, it maybe you have people. Maybe you have 
uh, magazines that you might have got at the grocery store, whatever, use them. They all have beautiful, bright pictures in them that you can use. Um, so I, that's a theme of kind of orange, green, and magenta. So let's see if we come across. Oh, that's nice. Oh, so that. Okay. And you can see in here, there's so many different, you know, pictures and colors. So you definitely can pick. Why don't we pick this yellow too? Oh, and I'll just go through these really quick. I saw blue. See, we got a blue here. We have some blue here. So you definitely can keep these and go through. And you see, even this, you just cut this out and use it. Now, something else that I love to do. I don't have my big uh, Ziploc bag here. I'll get it for the next video. But I take words. The, you know, power word together isn't, you know, maybe a word that you'll ever use in your art journal. But the word power, the word word, <laughs> rings those will be so i would cut these out and put them in my ziploc bag and save them and you know um even like here my heart is passion my heart and passion i would do that um the little heart i would cut out so awake arise you never know what you uh you know words that you might use so you can see just going through i mean look we can rip this apart Here's the thing though, when you are taking from a magazine and you are gonna use it in your art journal or what have you, we gotta get this glare out of here. Driving me nuts, cause the magazine's shiny. Um, you don't wanna rip this out, put it on a canvas and sell it. You can't do it. Then that's your uh, copyright, you know, disrespecting the copyright of it. I don't know how to say that any other way. But, uh, but like I said, taking it, ripping it apart and using it in your art journal for your own, uh, private, private kind of thing is not a big deal, but you don't want to steal somebody's stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, and then you can see here, so this could be used many, many times over. And then when you're done with it, throw it away and you then used it in a good way. Okay. So let's just start. I'm going to have my brush here. Ooh, this brush has been through some stuff and all I do is take these now you can use the backside too but I'm not I'm just gonna rip it <laughs> like this into pieces words completely fine now you notice this has a little shine to it that's all right we'll work with that so I'm not worrying too much on the size or the shapes that is it. Easy as pie. Is pie easy? I don't know. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab, I put them all in the pile over here. I'm going to uh, get some of my Mod Podge paper. I'm just going in. I also suggest that you put a piece of scrap paper behind your pages when you're gluing because um, it can, you know, make it stick together, but I'm not worrying about that today. I always tell you guys have a piece of paper where you can put off your paint, you know, your extra paint, or you could do it on your pages here, you know, in your art journal. See, see how easy. And then I'll just go in and take like, you know, some of these words. You can cover the whole page. You can cover some of the page. It'll be too big. And you see how we're starting. We didn't have to go buy scrapbook paper or although I do love to do and always bring home clearance, you know, unless you have the money and you want to buy, you know, you're feeling fancy and you want to buy a book of scrapbook paper or what have you. But, um, you know, this works just as well. Maybe you get uh, catalogs in the mail. And there's a lot of places out there that you can order free catalogs. I get seed ones, which have beautiful, which I meant to grab to do this video with uh, as part of it. But you know me. <laughs> I totally forgot. I sat down and I was like, let me start. So look, I'm just going to put this big piece here. doesn't matter. It's curling a little just because. See? Look at that. 
da, look at that. And let's get some, let me move this one. You know, and it moves till it dries. You don't wanna, it'll rip if you play around too much, but then I'm gonna show you. And then we'll put this little baby right here. Okay, so obviously you can leave it like this and then we throw some paint. But I know that the past few um, videos that I've done with mixed media, you guys are like, oh, you know, can you do it with, uh, I'm losing words today. Can you do it covering the whole pages? And of course you can. So I'm gonna do that the best of my ability. So let's go, I'm gonna cover these. Now, as I cover these with this Mod Podge paper, or again, your mats, whatever you have, whatever you're using, uh, and you throw this down on it, it's gonna cut down on that shine. And it'll help your paint stick better. Because obviously when the, the pages are glossy, you know, it's not gonna take the paint as well. So I'm just gonna take one of these and I'm gonna see how we're gonna collage on top. And this is basically what we're doing, we're collaging. I'll put it here. And you see, I'm gonna cover the majority. Let's get some green in there. Uh, let's do it up here. And we'll go over again. I'm not worrying about it. And you can see down here, you know, it, you just want some skinnies. And you can put a whole piece of paper if you want. If that's the look you're going for, why not? Who cares? It's yours. Do you boo? All right. I just, no, that dries. It dries pretty, pretty fast, the Mod Podge paper. It's really good. And I'm just, it's like a puzzle. You're just going to sit and some people really love this. Like if you're OCD, um, you know, which is not a bad thing. I'm OCD over many, many things. So now I'll go back in a little bit more glue on top of those. I think if you have OCD, yeah, I wish I had OCD in cleaning my home, <laughs> cleaning my house, which I don't. <laughs> I wish I did. My mom does. <laughs> She always has and I wish I did because I just could care less and I don't like to clean I like it I like how the house feels when it's clean um I definitely like that but as far as me like being like I'm gonna clean today it's just not not anything I really dig to do but we all have to do it all right I'm gonna lay a little bit more and like I said you can go definitely in these little areas and just put some you know more of these down on top of each other and you see how it just becomes a nice background um i've done videos where i've used papers and done like quilt kind of things on the background of papers you do, uh, on your journal and whatnot you can definitely i'll try to look for it and link it at the end of this video where i did the paper quilt um quilt block i should say not a paper quilt that's kind of a what do they call that oxymoron i don't know if that's the right word but it's a lot of fun and you could definitely do it with these kind of things as well these papers um i used i think scrapbook paper at the time green and black and i used some glitter and that kind of thing Ugh, i could do that for hours because that's a lot of fun um so yeah like i said if you have a minute or so, check out that video at the end of this video. Uh, I'll link it down as well, down below in the description. Always go down there and look, there's a lot of uh, links and stuff down there that you can uh, have some fun. Okay, then I'll just kind of push this down in there. Let me know down below what you have OCD over. Maybe it's a certain way that you eat a food. Maybe it's cleaning. Maybe it's clothes. Maybe you love to iron. Maybe you love, uh, I don't know. Maybe you have to walk in three circles, around in three circles. I don't know. There's so many things out there. And so I'm curious what yours is. I would probably do better to ask my husband or my daughter what my OCD kind of things are because I probably drive them nuts. 
Now you see here, I got a bigger piece of paper here. So, you know, it's not as hard to cover the whole thing. Uh, looks like my camera froze. I hope not. I hope it continues, please. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some glue down on here. I'll throw it clean off my brush with the other stuff. Okay. And then you can just, you know, put some paper with some color, you know, so you still get that, but see? All right, I think that's all I'm going to do on here. Maybe I'll do a little teeny bit reveal. Just to add some color. Okay, now don't throw these away. Okay, don't throw them away. Because put these in a Ziploc bag or get a grocery bag or a brown bag, whatever you have. Put a paper clip. I don't know. But don't throw these away because these are going to be great for your next journal page. And as you rip pages apart, like this, you just keep throwing them in a bag where you could just pull from because you don't have to have uh, color coordination. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter because we're just going to do mixed media. Now, I probably am not going to have time to do, it'll probably take way too long for me to do a background completely on here um, or pages rather. So we'll just start with a background and I'll show you a couple things. And then if you guys want to do it as well, then we can start up, you know, the next video or what have you and you can do it with me but i know i don't do mixed media journals that often now i'm going to dry this with my heat gun just to speed it up a bit you can use your hair dryer if you don't have a heat gun and like i always say if you don't have a hair dryer and you have a goodwill or thrift store near you go check it out because they have my goodwill has um hair dryers for a couple dollars but that will just help speed it up and you know otherwise I always say put on your favorite uh, youtuber or maybe look down below and find a link to another video of mine and watch a video and then by the time you come back this will be dry this stuff dries very fast so I like yeah. Good, good. Okay, so I'm going to put this, don't forget to put that in water because it will definitely uh, dry out and then you will ruin your brush. Okay. So, still looks dark. I might have to have Dave help me uh, with this lighting because I did move some things, which I don't know why I even bother. Let's do it brighter like that. Um, okay. Depends on how my eyes are that day. So you, you can go, you can look and say, oh, I like the green, I like the red, I like the pink, or you can totally do a different color. Sometimes when I do these, I will go over it with white and I will just kind of wash it all out. And then I'll go back in with a wet paper towel or rag or sponge or whatever and kind of wipe some of these off. But I think this time I'm gonna go in with a color. And, huh, because I want to get these, the background there. What color do I want to use? Why don't we use, and I don't want to use a, let's see. I don't want to use patina. I, I feel like I use that a lot because it's, I, I love it. I love the color. You can always tell colors people love. Let's do this. This is pink melon and that's like a nice, um, nice pink color. Let me see. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open it and kind of dot it around just so I don't have to spill it on my thing right now. You can see not too much yet. I'm going to add water because I want it to be translucent but I do want it to cover, you know what I mean? Let's see what happens. I'm just rinsing off my brush that I used. I'm going to dab it off, dabbing for Angie. I don't want it to be soaking wet, but I don't want it to be dry. And what I'm going to do is this. 
making sure that I'm getting the, and this is where putting a piece of paper, I don't think I have anything sitting here, putting a piece of paper here would be uh, good, you know, so it doesn't go on the other sides, your other papers. Okay. And you see how easy that is? Just going again. And this is why you want to use matte because you want, uh, you know, some of your paint to go over these pieces and you don't want it to be glossy because then you're just going to be dealing with the magazine paper again, right? All right. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to check this color again. Then what we're going to do, yeah, that's much better. It's not in there. Now you see the, I don't know what the heck I was doing. I leave it. Oh, goodness gracious. What did that, that wasn't a burp. I couldn't breathe there for a minute. Okay. Um, my body does all kinds of weird things as I get older. You can see how it is right now. And over here, it's a little light, you know, because of the light up there. I want to leave it sit. While you're leaving it sit for a minute, grab a art towel or a paper towel, whatever you use. I'm just going to grab a piece of my paper towel and you can see I'm just leaving it sit for a minute. Now take a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, um, what you can do is go back with that paint brush, rinse it off and then just kind of drip it because you just want that water to help accelerate you. Don't ask if that's the right word, uh, taking that water off. Or the paint off rather but look what happens you can see it's kind of getting that kind of alcohol ink look that's pretty cool oh i like that oh my god can i yell any louder okay so i'm just going in and pieces that i want to come back through i am going to wipe see how that green's coming back through now, of course, don't leave it on as long if you want it to be a little uh, lighter. Okay, and you see now we have this pinkish hue to it, which we didn't have before. And that's how I'm starting it. Now, I'm going to rinse my brush off again. I'm going to kind of squeeze it out and I'm going to see if I can get more I'm just dropping it seeing if I can get more of those little um, alcohol ink bits coming up where it's separated a little bit and the reason it's separated is because the magazine underneath is still shiny in certain areas so it kind of you know helps lift that off a little bit now I'm I got the water on there I don't care it's just gonna add me some texture I'm a rhyming beastie boy today. And I'm just going to blow a jar real quick. And look at this. Look how cool that looks. It just sits on there for a second. And then when you go, whew, it's giving us texture. And now we have something. You All you needed was some water and paint. Can you do this in watercolor? Because everything I get asked is when I'm doing an acrylic, can you do this in watercolor? Can you do this in watercolor? Well, you can do something similar in watercolor, but your paint's going to act different. And it's not a bad thing. You just have to know how your paint's going to react and, and to the different things, you know, and what you're doing. So if you guys want me to do the watercolor one, which I've done, I think, other ones. But, uh, you know, let me know. Okay. So that is going to be dry. And now you can see how we went from a regular, you know, colored uh, art journal page to us gluing down the scrapbook uh, or the magazine paper rather than scrapbook paper. And then we put some paint and I just used some pink uh, melon, which happened to be satin, but you can use acrylic, you know, acrylic mat or whatever you have. And then we have this. So 
that's where we're starting at. Now I think I'm going to put some, I don't know, what do we want to put on there? How about some, a little bit of white. Oh no, you know what? Why don't we use some texture paint? Yeah, I'm going to use, this is just the folk art plaid uh, texture paint. And I need to find something to take this out and scrape it with. Here we go. Excuse my arm. Excuse my arm. Okay. So I'm just going to go in here. It's texture, obviously. It's like sandy. Just a little bit, you see. Now, use a paintbrush if you don't have a, a palette knife or maybe you have an old spoon or something like that. And just kind of go in. And you see how we're just going to lay some of that texture down. And then I'm going to go in and scrape it. And then I'll do a little bit over here. Just do a little bit. If, and, and something else you can do. If you want and you have a stamp or a stencil... Like if you have a stencil, you can lay your stencil down. You could take your texture paste and just scrape it in. And then what happens, I'll try to grab it with my, and then you get some texture that way. You know, make sure you wipe off your stencil when you're done. La, 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 la. Um, and that kind of goes with your little, you know, your little circles. But you can do that. And then the last thing you can do, if you want, is put your texture paste down. You want to put it fairly thick for this next part. And then make sure you put your knife, you know, your whatever you're using away. And then take... If you have a uh, stamp or something to that effect, I don't want to use this one. I'll grab this one. This one's been through all kinds of stuff. You know, it's my tried and true. And just stamp it in. That's not going to be like deep enough. You want you need a deep etched one. But you go ahead and stamp it in, and then you make sure you wipe it off because. Although I'm a mixed media artist, so everything I have has texture paste and everything else all over it. So you see, you know, we're just getting it a little bit everywhere just to just to get a little bit of texture. Now, I'm not going to dry this with my heat gun. Um, you can if you want. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it dry normally. Um, and then, you know, in my next video, I will go on. We'll go on and try to. Uh, get a couple more layers done. But this is a great way, like I said, to just use your magazine and your art journal um, and recycle and reuse it. Why not? So let me know what you think down below. I'd appreciate it. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. And if you guys do it, you guys know you can tag me. All my social media is down below. Come find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. I'm everywhere. Um, and if you do this, tag me. Make sure you tag me wherever because sometimes I don't see what you guys do. And I know it makes you upset. And I understand, you know, you think you, you do it and then I don't get to see it. So make sure you tag me um, and, you know, or email me. That's all down there as well. And I have links down there. You can go check out Blitzy, which is an art and craft uh, store up to 70% off on all their arts and crafts. And they have every art or craft you can even think about. Um and like I said, you know, other videos and that kind of thing. So, as always, please be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. 
And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my videos. And if you just found me and watched my video and would like to be subscribed, please click the subscribe button down below. Hit that little bell next to it so you get notified when I upload, which is usually five to six times a week. This month has been very, very hard. Uh, I'm hoping to get back on my schedule. And if you have any requests or anything that you want to see, leave that down below as well. And I love you guys so very much. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.